sexual fetishes, torture, and cannibalism. It's a real-life story that makes Fifty Shades of Grey read like a nursery rhyme. A former NYPD cop reportedly planned to bring his violent fantasies to life by torturing, raping, and then eating his female victims, allegedly including his own wife. But attorneys for the former officer insist he never intended to live out these deviant, deadly fetishes. Did this so-called cannibal cop... That's right, cannibal. Did he plan to carry out... That's unbelievable. Did he plan to carry out these unthinkable acts, or was it just a fetish, or was he blowing off steam... Back with Laura Barron, our co-host this week. So, Drew, is there something like Cannibal Light where he just thinks about it but doesn't do it, like doesn't eat the face? I, I'm looking at my diet soda. I, I, I don't know. I, I, what would the can look like <laughs> is what I'm saying. Oh. I, 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 it, it, it feels weird to even joke about this, but it's so bizarre. You it's can't so help but crazy. sort of lighten it up. Yeah, it was something. Well, with us, attorney and radio host Lisa Wexler. She's been following the story. Lisa, Hi, you're Dr. a Fisher. wife, you're a mom. Hi, hey, Lisa, yes. thanks for joining us. Hi, there. You're... Uh, tell us what, how, you're, how you're processing the story and what the latest is. Well, the latest was in court today. I wasn't in court, but the reports are that three of the women that were on the list testified, and also the wife testified. And the women were testifying about whether or not they felt threatened by any behavior because they, they slightly knew this police officer, but they said that they didn't feel threatened. Personally, I don't think that that's relevant because there are a lot of people that go around doing horrible, heinous crimes that seem perfectly nice and natural during the day. You just have to see an old Alfred Hitchcock film to know that. Uh, what do I make of this? I think that it is bizarro. As a mother, as a wife myself, I could only imagine the horror. After all, here's a guy who dresses up as a police officer every single day, who goes out to fight the bad guys, who's carrying a gun, and then you find, like, a Jekyll and Hyde character at night with his computer that he's having fantasies of killing her, of killing a hundred women. He has their names and addresses. He's a police officer. Presumably he has access to neighborhood information. It's scary and it's frightening. And frankly, I think the wife is a hero. She ran away with yeah. her one-year-old. She turned him in. She contacted Agreed. the other women on Facebook to say, hey, wait a minute, you, you could be a weird victim of this guy, my husband, and now she's willing to testify in open court. She's a hero. Mm -hmm. and, and Lonnie or Darren, does she need to establish and some sort of intent to do this, or is it enough that he showed up on websites where people talked about these things? And by the way, I imagine consumed images that were these, were these people not out there consuming them, I, I know it's like kidding. When you say consume. Well, I mean, it, no, oh, Jesus, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be you're careful with that one, Drew. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, beg your pardon. Yeah. And, and, what I mean is, is and, and like you've accused me of stepping up. over the line. <laughs> I, 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 I lost it. Thank you guys, but thank you for getting me back on track here. But my question is this: Is it any different than somebody? I was about to use that word again. Going out and seeking kitty porn, if they're seeking cannibal, whatever. Isn't it the same kind of thing? Is that enough here? I think it is the same kind well, of that, thing, and I think that that's going to be the well, challenge for the defense to overcome that assumption. When we have heinous kinds of fantasies, we have a, we have a precedent in the law. Yeah, but, but well, hang on. I, we I, don't lock people up anticipatorily. We don't lock right. people up because they've got fantasies. We require right. that certain actions be taken. And what's from what's right. been reported, there are certain crimes that he appears to be guilty of. For example, accessing uh, a confidential records using the police database for his own personal use. These kinds of invasion of privacy issues. But in terms of this, right. this cannibalism bit, while it's sensational... He took no actual action. And that's ultimately oh, what Darren, I think gives the defense of right But Darren, that yeah, is infuriating, though. But Darren, that is infuriating. He had a well, well, maybe maybe. plan. You have to follow the law here. And the law is he's charged with conspiracy to commit murder yes. and cannibalism. And to commit conspiracy, you have to do more than just mere planning and talking about it. You actually have to take some overt actions towards it. And that remains to be seen. The, the wife actually did talk about how... Uh, he was actually asking her what her running route was, were there people around there, what time she was going. So if the, he might have been doing a little more than just talking about it. He might have actually taken some acts towards wow. actually accomplishing it. But, Dr. Drew, this is very reminiscent to me of I actually had an interview with um, the detectives who uh, investigated the Jeffrey Dahmer case. And they said when he finally started talking to them, it was almost like he was sharing a cookbook with them. Talk about kind of the 
different really? recipes he'd tried out. Yes, okay. and it was right. just well, the most bizarre thing. It's like that in Twilight Zone. Hold on. Hold on. the Twilight Zone episode, To Serve Man is a cookbook. I, I've got somebody that deals with Twilight Zone patients. It's Ms. Michelle. Michelle, now, do you have any experience <laughs> talking do. to these kinds of folks? I went online and looked into it a little bit, and the people I saw who were into this were really bizarre, really chilling. To I didn't even internet. realize this was real. Hold on. Right. And my question is, There's... do you think he's one of those guys, or do you think this is a guy that just is angry and sort of acting out in strange ways, or is this the real deal? Well, first of all, I mean, I keep thinking, okay, in DSM or for you, the physician's desk reference, do we have a diagnosis for uber, uber creepy? Because that's what this guy is. He's uber creepy. I mean, his poor wife. That's but here's you. the thing. I know, and I like creepy. This is the thing. He is, maybe he wasn't going to act out on this. Does it matter? The bigger story here is this guy has these thoughts and these impulses. And there's some thought about where these, these impulses come from. Is it subcortical? subcortical? Can it be controlled? But you can't yeah. prosecute someone on a thought crime. But you can't right. have a conspiracy right. if you have someone else, and Lonnie's absolutely right about that, if you have someone else agreeing to do it, and there's one furtherance. I, I did a conspiracy case this summer, and the guy was convicted on a lot less than this. I was so going to say, this talking, guy's gonna go can do it. talking can convict on conspiracy. I'm, I think that Darren would agree with me. Talking for a lot of RICO crimes, for a lot of other kinds of organized crime, mm -hmm. talking is enough. Well, not only that, again, uh, I'm just I, I hung up on the idea of like consuming, jeez, these words, like going after kitty porn, right. you know, it, it stops. You have to wait You're for creating her to have... a demand for horrible stuff, so people produce this stuff, and then you, I don't know. I, I, I think this is uh, egregious, and the guy carries a gun. I do too. Like, oh. All right, listen. And he's in a position he of power. But, th but this is not about his fitness as a law enforcement officer. That's an entirely different thing, and certainly there, right. the kinds of material he likes to consume is is highly relevant. <laughs> do we have to wait for the teeth marks to be in your face? No. We have to wait well, after well, the break. Who right knew back. that the phrase to protect and to serve to be, would be a cookbook? Oh, God. <laughs> to serve. Thank you, Darren. Well, well said. Oh, Darren. I'll be right back. A reminder that we'll be here tomorrow and Thursday continuing our coverage with our great panels of the Jody Arias case. I'm back with my co-host, Laura Barron. Laura, I'll read something to you. The so-called cannibal cop's wife testified that her husband was targeting at least 100 women and that his online chats revealed he wanted to, quote, here we go, burn them alive, adding, quote, he talked about devising an apparatus so the girls could be on the spit for 30 minute Ugh. shifts and be taken down so they I would live this. longer. Uh, Michelle, I know you love people like this, but I'm going to go out to, to Darren and Lonnie. Isn't that enough to sort of have somebody take notice? And I understand he didn't do anything, right. but isn't that enough? Agreed. Sure. Hey, b b better than she go to waste, Drew. After all, there's kids starving in Africa. Come on. To protect oh, and to goodness, serve. Darren, Thank you. There you go. There you go. Even if the law doesn't cover it, maybe somebody will write a law to cover it. Yeah. I don't think the jury's going to necessarily do. care. At least you're going to keep following well, this, right? He, he, uh, yeah, I'm going to keep following this case. I have to tell you the scariest bit, tidbit is that this website has over 30,000 followers worldwide, 30,000 oh other sickos okay. and creeps. That okay. is scary. Okay, Michelle, I want you to go and do check out those websites. I want you to watch that video. There's a video there of a, of a Japanese fellow who's really into yeah. this stuff. It, it'll give you sort of a more of a clinical sense of where these people are at and who they are and where they're hiding. I'll be talking to you about it. And then have a nice around. evening, Michelle. And, well, Michelle, <laughs> yeah. Michelle likes this stuff. So, All right, I've got to say goodbye I mean, to my great pal.